So, lucky last, uh, I'm a visiting professor in the marketing group. Um, thanks to very many people. So glad to be here, glad to share research. We've got very common themes between what Martin and Chris have presented. Uh, I'm not going to show very abstract, high-level stuff, but some of the common themes and problems we have will come through as you see what I'm trying to do too. Um, so, what I try to do um, in my work is two things. Firstly, we have this big literature on, on fake reviews, and you see Yelp, you see TripAdvisor, you see Amazon, and there's been a lot of effort in taking out um, these falsified reviews uh, from user-generated content. So I'm a competitor, and I write negative reviews about my restaurant down the road, or I didn't go to stay at the Marriott, and I wrote a fake review. And there's a lot of engineering going on here. It's Google, it's Amazon, etc. Uh, the second part of it is mainly from the marketing perspective. Well, we all know that we want to understand how people make decisions when it comes to advertising, when it comes to reviews. But the problem is, people in marketing are very focused on traditional information. People in computer science are very focused on online information. And while there's a lot of effort in detecting fake reviews and putting them out, we don't actually know how it affects people's decisions. So if I tell you that 25% of reviews at Yelp in Boston are fake, the question is, well, did you make a worse decision because you read fake reviews? If I showed you 10% of fake reviews, did you make a bad decision? We don't know. And it's getting increasingly hard to know because they're pulling them off before we even see them. So that's just one example of a problem. So I play in this, this little niche here, which is growing, uh, in that where potentially falsified or questionable information meets the consumer, meets the, the user. And it be consumers, it could be actually businesses too. So I think the biggest challenge we have uh, in this decade is going to be falsified information. In the 90s, it was search. Post Millennium, it's integrated search, you know, GPS and maps and online information. Now it's, well, is the information even worth looking at? If it's garbage in, it's garbage out. Like, quite a very, very old phrase. So if you don't solve this problem, all information, whether it's academic papers, whether it's journal reporting, whether it's user generated content, they're going to have issues. We're not going to be able to rely upon that information. And that's the space I'm playing. And two things I'm going to talk about today will. I'll come into that. So this is all pretty well known. You know, last year was a big kerfuffle about this Harvard uh, working paper that showed that Yelp had a review problem. We have a lot of um, traditional media companies getting into this space. I'd say in a very slow way. So they think that by this year, this is a year and a half old, more than 10% of reviews are going to be fake. Um, NPR was focusing upon this, talking about what leads to uh, some restaurants to write fake reviews about other restaurants. And here we have a very recent article saying if we ask people if you trust online reviews, half the people say no. And we find some in our studies that's, that's kind of true. So there are two pieces of work that fall into this space. So I'm going to talk about the second one. The first one is a database here, um, which I'm working with Rosanna and Chris has seen the database, much to his delight. A very large database, four million TripAdvisor reviews. We're trying to work out whether or not what hotels say is important is really important. So is it really true? And whether or not people think uh, that the experience in a hotel matches up with what other people think. So this ties into some of these network problems. If I post a review at time one in January, does that affect someone's review in time two in February? If I have a certain personality type and I post a review, does that affect another person's review if they have the same personality type? So once you get into these interactions over time, we have issues when it comes to uh, computing power and capturing text information. But I'm going to talk about mainly today a uh, study where we looked at 400 fake and 400 real reviews and asked people to look at them and tell us several things. So we have fake and real, and we have negative reviews and positive reviews. This is the experimental treatment. They were telling us if they found them helpful or not. They were telling us if they were fake or real, they had to guess. And they were also telling us if they were trying to guess, sorry, if they were fake or real. Oh, sorry, we measured if they were accurate in guessing fake or real. So they made a guess, we tell them later on if they were right or wrong. That's not really important for us. But some background information on, on what we find. We also ask people to, to tell us about their online behavior and how they perceive online information. So for example, we ask them whether they trust reviews or not. And we do find some differences by simple demographics. For example, females tend to trust reviews more than males do. That's statistically significant. Lots of other things occur too. But also, we ask them to say, do you think you're good at detecting fake reviews? And guys inevitably think they're really good <laughs> at detecting fake reviews. And women are a bit more conservative. Now we do look later on, and actually guys are no better right, at detecting fake reviews. So this is something that pops up again and again. Guys always say they're better at everything. And it, it really pans out. <laughs> so what, what's worrying is, we ask people, well, do you find reviews to be helpful? And at this stage, we haven't told them or asked them to guess if they're fake or real, only we know that. And this is statistically insignificant. So people can't tell the difference 
between fake and real when it comes to helpfulness. They find them all equally helpful. Fake or real, positive or negative. It doesn't matter. So that's kind of worrying from one point of view. It means people aren't filtering them out when it comes to their helpfulness rating when they give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. When we ask them to guess if something's real or fake, right. they're far more likely to think a positive review is fake. Whether it's a real or fake review, as long as it's positive, they tend to think, well, it's exaggerated, it's got capital letters, it mentions too many things, we think it's fake. They're far less likely to think a negative review is fake. In actuality, they're doing quite well here. They're actually guessing quite, quite well about fake reviews being fake. Right. So there's a bias here toward positive reviews being perceived to be more fake than negative reviews. Now, I showed you just then the number of times they guess fake. This is the actual result in terms of are they right? Do they guess correctly if they're fake? And something quite interesting here too happens. This is a success level at guessing whether a fake negative review is actually fake. It's very low. So here, as I say, they're basically half as likely to get that right than any other kind of review. Which means positive reviews actually are quite I picked up quite well, if you like, better than random chance when it comes to guessing fake. But negative fake reviews are very rarely picked out uh, by the user. So this means when you're posting negative fake reviews, two things are, are important here. One, we know that negative reviews have a big impact upon people's decision making, more than positive. And this is also telling us, well, not only that, people are terrible at guessing and finding that out, at actually identifying that fake review. Right. So when we ask them to actually tell us, this is the big quote, sort of qualitative one, we're trying to sort of send you a big data list, why do you think things are fake or real? When that make a guess? And we find some consistent comments. A lot of people think that a negative review wouldn't be fake. Why would you write a fake negative review? Now, from my perspective, I, I can see why you'd write a fake negative review, but there's a general perception among a large segment of the population that people wouldn't write fake negative reviews. So that's going to change, I think, over time. But right now, that's the state of the art. This is only a few months old. We're looking at what predicts actual success in its entirety using a new method, our relational causal discovery. But just for now, some preliminary findings. We do a big five personality test on people before they do this activity. And we find some qualities predict accuracy. So most interestingly, I think neuroticism. The more neurotic you are, the better you are at picking up fake reviews. <laughs> now, we have some complications because we also find women are more neurotic. So when we throw women and men in as a, as a factor, this goes away. So we're having to struggle with this um, interaction with the gender here. And of course, if you know the whole tale, this is the whole tale of context here, you're better at detecting fake or real. That's kind of contextual. Right. So where we now, we're actually applying a new method that was just developed last year at UMass Amherst, called the relational score, uh, causal discovery algorithm. It's a recursive way of guessing and predicting um, fake or guess, guess outcomes here. And we're integrating the um, linguistic word query um, word query technique to try and classify all reviews and classify all personalities and match them together to produce fake or real guesses. Thank you. Bye, long time. Thank you.